Today on BRS TV, we're going to discuss trace elements. Trace elements in general are an interesting subject and center of a lot of conversations. Fact is, people have maintained successful reef tanks without spending a lot of time worrying about trace elements. So why should we be concerned about these things at all? Well, these are elements which are believed to be part of a coral's natural metabolic function and include things like strontium, potassium, iron, iodine, zinc, palladium, selenium, really the list goes on and on. I like to think of them as a concept similar to how humans use vitamins and minerals. More or less, we could survive a surprisingly long time and even grow on a diet of mostly protein, sugars, and fat like pizza, hamburgers, and soda. However, adding healthy foods rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants will help initiate and regulate important bodily functions, which increases overall health and promotes a healthy immune system. So to bring this all back to corals in our reef tanks, it's absolutely possible to maintain a successful reef tank with just proper light, calcium and alkalinity, and a good water chain schedule. But there are varying degrees of success. There are always ways to improve upon the artificial environments we've created in our tanks. The hobby is really in a constant state of evolution, and as we progress, we continually learn more about creating an ideal environment to maximize health, growth, coloration, and immune systems. Many of the trace elements are believed to do exactly that. Increase growth rates, bring out brilliant coloration, ensure proper formation of the calcium carbonate crystal for skeletal structure, and increase overall coral health of the living tissue so it can resist parasites and disease. Most of us find all of these things pretty desirable and would gladly dose them if it was affordable and easy. However, there are some issues that make it more difficult than we might like. The first is there isn't a commonly agreed upon level or test kit for a vast majority of these elements. The test kits that are available are notoriously hard to do and read properly, or the margin of error is so wide it makes the readings of little use. On top of that, there doesn't really seem to be a general consensus in our hobby on which elements are the most critical or how much to dose. Every brand of product tells us something different, and the reefing community in general seems to debate these things endlessly. Simply put, it's fairly difficult to know how much of these elements to dose, and in most cases, overdosing anything related to the aquarium is significantly more dangerous than not dosing enough. So what are we supposed to do? Well, there are four basic ways to approach trace elements which we believe will produce safe, reliable results. The first is simple water changes. This is the safest and easiest way, but also the most labor-intensive and possibly expensive. For this to be a proper solution, you'll need to make sure you're using a high-quality salt mix, which contains appropriate levels of these elements to begin with. This is something that's difficult for the average aquarium owner to know for sure, so I suggest looking at the quality of the entire line they offer and the importance they put on maintaining these elements in general. I personally wouldn't expect the cheapest available option to be the best in this case. One thing to keep in mind is if you dose calcium and alkalinity between water changes, that means your tank's corals are consuming these elements faster than simple water changes alone can keep up with. That likely also means the corals are consuming many trace elements faster than water changes are going to keep up with as well. So while a good water change schedule is going to help provide a continual source of trace elements, as time goes on these elements will continually get lower, so it isn't an ideal long-term solution. This is where I think a few companies have taken a fairly unique approach to this issue. Some of the two-part manufacturers have done testing which indicates many of the elements a coral utilizes are consumed in a similar ratio to how much calcium it consumes. Since calcium is a major element required for growth and there are tons of accurate test kits available for calcium, this strategy seems to make a lot of sense and provides us a method for dosing trace elements that minimizes the risk of overdosing and doesn't rely solely on test kits for each element. For example, the Red Sea version is fairly simple. For every 10 milliliters of calcium solution added to the tank, we add one milliliter of each of the four trace elements from the Red Sea Colors program. What's nice about this program is it's also matched with the Reef Energy products, which supplies carbohydrates, amino acids, and vitamins. Overall, the reefing program is intuitive and pretty easy to follow. The Fauna Marin products take a similar approach with their Ball in Light Trace Element 1-2-3 package. The bottles are separated into elements designed around color, 
growth, metabolic elements, and health elements. What makes this program a bit different is they can be mixed in with their standard two-part solution known as the balling light system. This means that trace elements are added as part of the standard two-part dosing and really easy. I'd also like to note that most of the trace element systems based on calcium and alkalinity are somewhat interchangeable. So you could certainly use a Fauna Marin or Red Sea products with other brands of two-part that don't include trace elements, a do-it-yourself two-part, or our bulk package two-part system and achieve most of the same benefits. The next method of maintaining trace elements is through the use of calcium reactors and natural coral media. Since you're basically dissolving old coral skeleton into its base elements, it's logical to assume that along with calcium and alkalinity, you're also adding trace elements the coral incorporated into its skeletal structure. Combined with a regular water chain schedule using a high quality salt mix, this can be a pretty decent solution. However, it is unlikely to cover the entire spectrum of elements utilized by the soft tissue and its symbiotic algae zooxanthellae, some of which may not be incorporated into the skeletal structure. This is where standalone trace elements come in. These can be used with basically any tank or calcium solution like Kalkwasser, two-part, or calcium reactors. Since these products are more or less dosed according to the directions on the packaging, such as a few milliliters or drops a day, you have two basic options. Either limit yourself to elements where there's a reliable test kit or select a brand you trust. Or better yet, a brand someone you trust has used with proven results. The KZ line is one of those lines where many users have seen some pretty impressive results and a large user base at zeovit.com. Many people think of KZ as only the low nutrient zeovit system, but a vast majority of these products can be utilized outside of that system. In an attempt to demystify these products, we've organized them into categories that make a bit more sense. Inside the additives category, you'll find the Zeovit line, elements in color enhancers, coral nutrition, and problem solvers. Most of the trace elements will be found in the elements in color enhancers category, many of which describe the element and what to expect, such as the B balance, which states it will enhance reds and corals like SPS and Pacillopora. So this week's question of the week is, how do you manage calcium, alkalinity, and trace elements? Share your thoughts or check out what others are doing in the comments area below. Next week, we'll be releasing a detailed video exploring Kelkwasser and how to use it as well as a short demo on how to build your own do-it-yourself Kelk Dripper. As always, if you found this video helpful, subscribe to be notified when new videos are released each week. Thank you for watching BRS TV.